In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to make what I call a portable warm water bucket shower. In doing so, I'll be reviewing my bucket heater, my portable shower, and then I'll talk about how you can use your portable power station along with a five gallon bucket of water to take a warm shower when you go camping or even during a power outage. I'm going to focus on the power outage aspect because we live in an all electric home and when the power goes out, we don't have any more warm running water. If you have a, a gas water heater, you might be in the same situation should the gas be turned off at some point. Later in the video, I'm going to test how long it takes to heat up five gallons of water with this bucket heater. And then I'm going to set it all up and show you how it works. And then we'll test to see how long it takes for this shower to pump out five gallons of water. This is my bucket heater. It's called an immersion water heater. It'll heat up five gallons of water in minutes. Now it won't bring it to a boil, but according to the website I bought it from, it should get up to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit before it shuts off automatically. It's rated at 1500 watts, so my, my portable power station can handle that. I have seen bucket heaters rated at 1000 watts, just in case you have one that's uh, a little bit smaller than my, my portable power station. What I like about this particular one is you have to completely submerge it in the water in order to use it, and that's what I want to be able to do. The bucket heater I had before, which I sent back, you would have to prop up above the water. You, you can only insert eight inches of it, and, and uh, it was kind of a pain, you know, to try to rig it. This, I just put it in, and I'm good to go. The other reason I like this one is because at its widest point, it, the diameter, it's about two inches or so. And that will allow me to take one of my water canisters and drop it right in. The other water heater I had uh, wouldn't do that. So that's, that's convenient. I have 24 of these five gallon containers uh, full of water for emergencies um, stored. If you'd like to see a video on, on uh, my review on these, just check it out right here in the link. So this is, this is really handy. People use it for things like auto detailing, washing their dog, warming up water to wash their dog outside, uh, heating water up in the sink, uh, even an inflatable pool. Now you don't want this in the water while you're touching the water. Don't touch the water when you're using this. And when you want to check the temperature, use a thermometer. I suggest you test the water temperature you like beforehand. So next time you take a shower, take a thermometer and see what temperature uh, you like. And then that way you'll know what to target the temperature at without trying to test it with your finger. You're going to burn yourself. This is the Iron Hammer Portable Shower. It has a submersible pump with a rechargeable battery that can be charged with a USB cable that it comes with. It has an uh, off and on button and a two mode button. The thing I like about this particular uh, shower is the dial. You can adjust the pressure. You can turn it off and on and anything in between. I like it on high. Now the reason I like that is because I don't want to run out of water before I'm done taking the shower. So what I do is I just turn it on full blast to rinse off and then turn it off, not all the way off, but, but almost off, because I don't, I don't think turning it off would be a good idea with the pump running. I'm not sure, it's just an opinion. So I just turn it almost off, and then wash myself, turn it full on to rinse. So it's pretty simple. The stream's very strong with this, I think. According to the site, you're not supposed to run anything under 41 degrees Fahrenheit or above 122 degrees Fahrenheit through it. This is my EcoFlow Delta 1300 portable power station. It's rated at 1800 watts, has a battery capacity of 1260 watt hours, with about 1000 usable watt hours. So it can handle my bucket heater just fine. My bucket heater is rated at 1500 watts. So if you divide 1500 by 60 for 60 minutes, it comes out to about 25 watt hours per minute on average, which means if it takes 10 minutes to, uh, to heat my water up, it's only going to take 250 watt hours or so out of my battery bank. If it's 15 minutes, it would take 375 watt hours uh, out of it, and that's that's not bad at all. I can I can get that back in here no problem with my panels. If you don't have solar panels or or an, uh, or a stormy out, and you can't charge it up. You probably shouldn't be doing this anyway. You should you should you know conserve your power for more important things. So let's see how long it's going to take to heat up five gallons of water. I added approximately five gallons of water to my five gallon bucket and the temperature is 63.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The uh, bucket heater is completely submerged. 
I like to uh, take my showers at about 100 to 103 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to see how long it takes to heat this up to 100 degrees. I'm ready to go with my EcoFlow Delta 1300. And here we go. Just gonna turn it on. It's drawing 1675 watts. It's rated at 1500 watts. Starting this timer. We'll check back in a while. I was surprised that it was taking so long to uh, get to 100 degrees. Still 68.5. That doesn't seem right. So I decided to use my own thermometer here because I have two of these and I checked it. It's very accurate. 112 degrees right now. 67.4, their thermometer says. So you want to throw that in the trash. So I'm going to run this again, let this water cool off and find out how long it actually gets, takes to get to 100 degrees. So let's give it another try. I emptied the five gallon bucket and then refreshed the water with approximately five gallons and the temperature 64 degrees, 64.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's give it a shot, see how long it takes to get to 100. There, ready to go. Turn the switch on. Start. All right, I'll check back in a little bit. Okay, so it reached 100 degrees at 13 minutes. And the battery's at 76% state of charge. So this is what the setup looks like. Normally we have this five gallon bucket inside of our shower here, but for this test we have it out here. We drilled a hole through the lid and disconnected the pump so that we can get the hose through the lid and then reconnected the pump. This is so we can keep soapy water out of the clean water. We'll also put uh, a rag around that hole and the, and the hose to help keep the soapy water out. This pump won't fit in my, my five gallon blue container. So that's why we use the uh, uh, Home Depot five gallon one. Now the way you attach the shower head is with this little suction cup. But the suction cup won't work on tile like this. It has to be a complete flat surface. That's why we have it on the glass right here. But another option is to simply remove your shower head and, and place this one up in the uh, existing bracket. So let's find out how long it'll take for this pump to empty out five gallons. Let's set the timer. Okay, it's getting pretty low. We're at three minutes. That's it. I will call it four minutes, given the benefit of the doubt here, because you could actually fill this up a little bit more than I had it. Because I had this, what about this full? So you fill the five gallon up, it'll go five minutes. So there you go, that's all there is to it. When you're done, just be sure you drain it and dry it really well. And then all you have to do is just put it back in your bucket. And there you go. You have a portable warm water bucket shower. Thanks for watching. If, uh, if you've liked the video, please like it, subscribe, and, and possibly share it. Have a great day.